Howdy again everyone, the Chinese TT Artisan company are continuing to generate new autofocus lenses as today they bring out a new autofocus optic for Sony's APS-C E-mount cameras, the AF 35mm f1.8. Here it is, a neat little thing at a retail price of about 150 US dollars. Potentially a good price, if the lens is good enough, of course. I'd like to thank TT Artisan for sending me one of these lenses for testing, although as usual, this is a totally independent review. I'm testing an early production version here, apparently the final production lens will have very minor cosmetic changes and a slightly improved resistance to flaring. As I mentioned, this lens is designed for Sony's mirrorless APS-C cameras. Here's what the full frame image looks like. As you can see, its coverage isn't really so bad, but it's definitely intended for crop. At that 35mm focal length, the equivalent of about 52mm on full frame is a lovely standard field of view, wide enough to get a bigger picture into your shot, but tight enough to get a nice emphasis on your subject, especially at f1.8, where you can get some lovely out of focus backgrounds. The lens's metallic build quality is surprisingly good for its price, albeit very simple. It's based on a metal lens mount without weather sealing. The only control point on the lens is its metal focus ring, which turns very smoothly, but only responds with the focus motor quite slowly. As you can see here, the lens only exhibits a small amount of focus breathing. Now, the autofocus motor works reasonably well at bright apertures, although more expensive lenses will work faster and more confidently. Also, the autofocus didn't work so well for me at narrow apertures like f11 or f16, so I would not, for example, rely on it to shoot a wedding or a sports event, but for casual photography it did work accurately enough for me. The lens doesn't come with a hood, and its filter thread size is 52mm wide, it does not feature image stabilisation. Overall, the build quality here is as tough and as simple as it could be. The autofocus motor works within its limitations, but it's not as snappy and confident as those found on more expensive autofocus lenses. Ok, let's see about its image quality now. I'll be testing it on a Sony A5100 camera with its 24 megapixel APS-C sensor. In camera corrections are turned on. At f1.8, in the middle of the image, we're seeing very good sharpness and contrast, but also an edge of purple and magenta colour fringing on contrasting edges. The corner image quality is noticeably softer, but it's still a fairly clear image there overall. f2 looks about the same, but f2.8 looks brighter and clearer and a little sharper. Back in the middle, we're seeing excellent resolution and contrast now, although the truly eagle-eyed will still notice just a hint of colour fringing, which never completely goes away, if truth be told, although it's only a minuscule amount. Here's f4 in the middle, and the corners look very slightly better again, but stop down to f5.6 to see perfect sharpness across the entire image frame. It's tased this sharp down to f11, and strangely, even at f16, diffraction doesn't seem to be softening anything. I suspect that the lens isn't actually stopping its aperture all the way down to the reported f16 here. I did notice that my shutter speeds were quicker than they should have been when stopped down beyond about f5.6, so it seems there could be a slight aperture control issue here. Still though, at the end of the day, this is sharper image quality than I was expecting to see from such a low budget lens. Apart from the mild issues with chromatic aberration, it's performing quite well and able to get fairly sharp images even at bright apertures. Ok, let's turn off those in-camera corrections and take a look at distortion and vignetting. Do you remember that large coverage the lens offered when I showed you the full frame image? Well, that has translated into very low vignetting, even at f1.8, reducing the amount of brightening correction needed there, and so improving image quality in your final picture. Stop down to f2.8 and those corners brighten fully. The lens only projects a negligible barrel distortion here, so overall it's a great performance actually. Less encouraging though is that the lens's minimum focus distance is only about 60cm, not really getting you very close to your subject. The good news though is that close up image quality is just as sharp at f1.8, although we're still seeing a touch of magenta fringing. Stop down to f2.8 and that's mostly gone, and we see a touch of extra sharpness too. Let's see how well the lens works against bright light. Whoa! 
This thing flares worse than a pair of jeans from 1976. I've never dropped acid before, but surely this is what it must look like. Stop down the aperture to f4, and a bit of that flaring clears up, but it's still like watching the ending of 2001 A Space Odyssey through your camera's viewfinder. It's a shame my copy of the lens didn't come with a hood. While we're working in the dark, let's take a look at coma smearing. We are seeing moderate smearing on bright points of light in the image corners here at f1.8. It's still there at f2.8, and it stays there all the way down to f5.6, only really clearing up at about f8. Ouch. At f11, sun stars begin to emerge, and at f16, they get fairly strong. Let's look at this lens's bokeh now. Good news here, no problems at all. Surprisingly smooth, out of focus backgrounds all over the place, with no obvious issues. And finally, related to bokeh comes longitudinal chromatic aberration. At f1.8, it's unfortunately pretty strong, as you can see. It's still there at f2.8, but at f4, it's mostly gone. Ok, overall then, some pretty interesting results from this lens. It's undoubtedly a sharp lens for its low price tag, which is really pleasing to see. It does struggle though with some chromatic aberration, and some of the craziest flaring I've ever seen in nearly 13 years of lens testing. Its autofocus motor is not the most confident in the world either, but as I said, it is sharp, and that counts for an awful lot. Its contrast is decent, and its out of focus backgrounds look beautifully soft, so it's a very capable lens if used within its limitations. At a price of only $200, this thing does come recommended. I love testing camera lenses, and I'm going to be doing it for a long time to come, but it's very time consuming and costly to do, and that's why I love my Patreon supporters so much. They make such a big difference to keeping these lens reviews going, from little cheap manual focus lenses to expensive behemoths. Check out my Patreon page in the description below. Supporters get all kinds of exclusive bonus content, including special videos, pictures, and early access. Take it easy, everyone.